Ambiguity. Linguists really like ambiguity because it shows how we organize phrases and sentences at a deeper level in our minds, beyond what we can see on the surface of sentences. So this is especially interesting to us in syntax, where we're interested in phrase structure. In this video, we're going to be looking at some examples and trying to understand what it is that we're doing in our minds that's different from what we can just see on the surface. So I'm going to start with this example. Old men and women deserve respect. And I think if you just ponder on this for a moment, you can see that the ambiguity lies in that word there, the old. And the question is whether it applies to just men, for example, old men and any women deserve respect, or old men deserve respect and women deserve respect. So in this case, we're restricting the old to just the men. Or it could mean that it's both old men and old women. And in that case, the old applies to both equally. And it has to do with what the and is combining. Is it just combining the men and women, or is it combining old men with women? And here we're using these brackets as a way of grouping phrases together. Now, as we get more advanced in our study of syntax, we'll find that trees are better for representing structure visually because I think it's just easier for us to process. It's easier for us, for our minds, to understand hierarchical structure when we have a tree structure. And I'll show you some tree structures towards the end of this video. All right, here's another example. Mike Hammer shot the man with a camera. Now, this could mean that he shot the man with a gun and the man was holding a camera. So in that case, with a camera is modifying man. It's man with a camera. Or it could mean that my camera, Mike Hammer, sorry, had a camera and he used it to take a picture of the man. Now, there we also have what's called lexical ambiguity, where we have these two different meanings of shoot. In one case, it means to shoot with a gun. In another case, it means to shoot with a camera. Here's another ambigu ambiguous sentence. She liked hunting dogs. And here you see some tree structures. Now, in one case, the hunting acts as an adjective to describe the type of dogs. So that would mean something along the lines of she liked dogs that are bred for hunting. The other interpretation of this sentence is the one that makes me want to cry. And that's the idea of her actually going out and hunting for dogs. But again, there is both a structural and a lexical ambiguity in this. So the hunting can be an adjective. When we add an ing to verbs, that's a way of forming an adjective. But it can also be a just a form of a verb. It's usually called the present participle form of the verb. And like also is lexically ambiguous, where in one case, it's a verb that takes as its complement a noun phrase, and in another case, it's a verb that takes as its complement a verb phrase. There are multiple levels of ambiguity going on in here, but the one that we're most interested in is structural ambiguity. The idea that we can see a different sort of structure in the two sentences. Here's the last one I want to go over. Um, this is from the comic strip Baldo, and it begins with Baldo saying, I feel like going out with Beatrice again. And his friend, not surprisingly, understands that to be sort of an odd sentence. And he says, again, you've never gone out with Beatrice before. And Baldo says, I know, but I have felt like going out with her before. 
And again, there's an underlying st structural ambiguity going on here. In one case, the again is modifying this verb phrase going out with Beatrice. And in the other case, it's modifying feel like going out with Beatrice. So the first one is how Baldo's friend interpreted it. The second one is how Baldo meant it. Now, in this case, I think it's going to be useful for us to actually go ahead and draw the tree structures for these two interpretations. All right, here's our sentence again. And I'm going to go through and first label the lexical categories. So the first is I, that pronoun, just stands for a noun phrase. And of course, Beatrice, a proper name, does likewise. Then we've got feel like, and that's a phrasal verb. So I'm going to treat that just as a single verb, a single, I'm going to call it a verb verb. It takes as its complement a verb phrase. So a transitive verb takes as its complement a noun phrase. A verb phrase verb takes as its complement a verb. So I'm just going to label that VV. And then we've got another phrasal verb here, go out with, um, that should be treated as just a single word. This acts as a transitive verb. And we get then a verb phrase out of that transitive verb plus the noun phrase. And then over here, we've got an adverb again. Now, it could be that we form a verb phrase by adding an adverb to go out with Beatrice. And that forms a new verb phrase, go out with Beatrice again. That's often how adverbs work, is they combine with a verb phrase to create a new verb phrase. And then we've got our verb phrase verb, and that combines with a verb phrase to form a verb. And then we combine the noun phrase and the verb phrase to form a sentence. Okay, so this is the first interpretation. This is the normal one where it was understood that he meant that he wanted to go out with Beatrice again, meaning that he wanted to, that, that he had gone out with her in the past and he wanted to go out with her in the future. But of course, that's not the interpretation that he had in mind. So we'll go over here and do the one that he had in mind. Again, we will label our lexical categories. Oops, there we go. That looks ugly, but that's how it's going to stay. Then we've got our transitive verb, and then we've got our adverb. Again, we create a verb phrase by combining a transitive verb with a noun phrase. But this time, we're going to go ahead and create our verb phrase from feel like going out with Beatrice. And then afterwards, add the adverb again to create a new verb phrase, feel like going out with Beatrice again. And then finally, we'll combine the noun phrase and the verb phrase to form a sentence. All right, so that's the idea. And now we can see them side by side and see that the only difference between them is when, when, where we apply again.